Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome Don uh, Dieter to, uh, to give a presentation on the history of Chestermere High School. And one of the reasons why we do this in the Historical Foundation is because uh, a lot of the, we have a lot of new residents in there and we've just discovered that they're very unaware of the history and some of the things that have gone on at Chestermere. And we've gone into some of the schools in elementary and they're not sure where the uh, water comes in from, uh, from the lake and um, what's it used for. And, and they kind of wonder why, why is Chestermere High School outside of the proper, you know, the, the boundaries of the city of Chestermere. So, um, so history sometimes is happening today and we don't understand it. We think sometimes history is like a hundred years ago. So, um, but anyways, um, Don is, um, uh, as I mentioned before, his family was raised in this area east of Chestermere, but he, um, uh, was a student of Chestermere and graduated in 1971. The school opened in 61, so you can imagine Don was one of the first people to uh, to graduate or went in the in the five years previous. But um, and then he not only uh, was a student of Chestermere, then he went to uh, university and graduated, and then he started to teach uh, in Chestermere High. So he started teaching in 1980, and he's been teaching in about uh, 40 years. Um, I think he said 41 years at Chestermere. So Don and I have a bit of a background in the fact we both taught math. And I know that Don was uh, always very interested in math. We, we worked on the grade nine um, uh, curriculum or, or testing for the for, uh, Rocky View School Division. And and I know that he always enjoyed uh, the, the students. So when you have a combination of someone who likes the subject, and someone who enjoys the kids, it, it makes for a good, uh, a good teacher. So um, we also played hockey together and he was a, what we call a stay-at-home defenseman. Um, so we've had, a, we've had a bit of a background. Don has also served on many boards, the rec board um, uh, for one, but uh, many boards. So anyway, the reason we're bringing Don in here is because he does have a history in this area and, um, was a student and, and was a teacher for many years and would recognize the, the changes that have gone on uh, at the high school uh, over the years, what the school was like years ago. And I know Greg Williams is in the, is in, he was also a teacher at Chestnut for a member, number of years. And um, I was also a teacher there for about nine years, but I left in 2001. So anyways, um, here's Don. All righty, good afternoon. Um, Bill neglected to mention that he was my student teacher before he became a real teacher. <laughs> so we have a lot of history. Um, a lot of the things that I'm going to mention today, I got, uh, first of all, from our history book. And after that, I went back and researched uh, through the yearbook that I found up there. Barking. <laughs> Anyways, um, to give a little bit of uh, history at the school, first of all, I'd start off just by reading a little bit here uh, as to the beginnings from the history book, the article that Ethel Barnett, uh, Ethel Fries from down at Indus wrote uh, when we did the book, so I'll start with that. Um, she has written, as the area surrounding Calgary became populated, there came a need for a local community high school. Previously, Indus had high school space, but the students living in Conrad, Shepherd, and Maryland attended school in Calgary. Pressure was brought for the district to build its own high school. The location for the high school would prove to be a much debated issue. The first site contemplated was the George Ray land on the north side of number one highway. 
The water quality at this location, though, proved to be unsatisfactory when the presence of globber salts was discovered. Mrs. Winifred Snyder was then approached to see about purchasing a block of land from the estate of her late husband, Roy Snyder. The land purchased for the school bordered CPR land, was nice level ground suitable for sports fields, had good access to Highway 1, Glenmore Trail, and was on the Indus Road. It was central to all communities. So after much debate, the land located at 72427 west of the 4th was chosen. This actually was about halfway between Indus and Conridge. Suddenly, in the middle of an Alberta prairie field, a few slabs of cement grew into Chestermere High School. And in the spring of 1961, Northgate Construction started work on the school and two residences. That gives the background as to why the school was located where it was and the water issue that it encountered. And water is still an issue today. It's one of the school's biggest expenses because all of the potable water has to be trucked in. Um, as the school site actually lies outside the city of Chestermere, it uh, doesn't have access to city infrastructure and as I said, continues to be one of the highest expenses. The high school was officially opened on December 4th, 1961. Principal Southern and eight teachers had 11 classrooms and 195 students from grade eight to 12. It was a brick building that formed uh, kind of a glorified L with the gymnasium central at the bottom. The students came from Conrich, Indus, Langdon, Shepherd, and Maryland. Chestermere was only a few summer villages at the time and was certainly not incorporated. Some of the interesting things from that first year, the student union magazine sales raised funds for gymnasium equipment. There was the start of a points book for classroom behavior. The highest points for the week got the school radio for the next week. <laughs> dress code was in place and it required the girls to wear skirts or dresses only. And the senior boys basketball and curlers were divisional champions. First year, <laughs> first championship. City of Calgary annexation resulted in an enrollment drop, and therefore the grade seven students from Indus and Conrich were moved to the high school in 1962. Another classic year as the senior boys and girls were basketball divisional champions. 1966-67 celebrated centennial year. Students World Team tied for first place and won $200 that year. The staff and student numbers had remained consistent until the following year when we had 14 staff and 201 students. Not just a basketball school, two crooks and a lady won the Zone 5 drama competition. Flag football started in the division and for those of us that wanted to partake in shop and home ec, we rode the bus to Airdrie to go to George McDougall School on Fridays to get these classes. 1971 was my year of graduation. I went to the school there for six years. We used to bus to Conrich and then bus back to the high school. Um, it was a one hour bus ride. Uh, my dad used to come and pick me up at the end of the day, so it was 10 minutes. He enjoyed his conversations with uh, the many bus drivers, Matt Bate, uh, Bates, Ted Bronworth, uh, and so on while he waited for me. Um, I started teaching there in the May of 1980. I retired after the 2000-2001 year. Uh, just needed a little bit of a break, but continued to coach, uh, taught with contracts, 
and subbed until the present. And it's very interesting to see uh, a third generation of students from the ones that uh, started there originally. I, I was in a grade eight class the other day and it reminded me that my first grade eight class in the fall of 1980, these folks are now grandparents. <laughs> 1971-72, there were 17 staff members and 291 students. The following year, there were 23 staff and 347 students, just about an increase of 50-some students. This then was the time of the first expansion uh, that completed the uh, rectangular square from the ends of the original building. There were six open area classrooms, an open area library, two new science labs, fine arts room, industrial arts room, and home ec room, uh, a new office in the uh, southwest corner of the building. The original office was a broom closet, and I remember Mrs. Corsiato having to squeeze in there to do secretarial work. Uh, and there were some new showers. This was officially opened on November 21st. And as I said, made an entire rectangle around a central courtyard that is still in use today. 1973-74, uh, the next year, we were at 401 students. And that was the year that tackle football started in the division. Uh, Dr. Norm Miner and a number of the other folks uh, organized that and it was the Red Devils football team. Fall of 1975, adult education classes began using the facility. 1977 and 78, 498 students, just about 500. And this overcrowding then required the grade seven students to remain at Indus for the following three years. In the third decade now, 1981-82, all of the grade seven students returned to Chestermere, 30 staff, 458 students. Uh, a couple of years later, portables were added to the northeast corner. And 1984-85, construction started on the second edition. And this was an addition. If you've been at the school or saw the school lately, it has a whole building to the north. But in order to make it economically feasible, we put a link in and that made that whole new building an addition. So that was uh, got, uh, got the new building going. 1985-86, the second expansion opened on November 13th. And this was the first phase that uh, put rooms on the south of the new building, the west side and the east side, centered around a new gymnasium. Uh, there was a cafeteria area that was put along the west side that's now two classrooms. Uh, band room uh, was put in an IA shop. We had a business room and three classrooms along the south, and then new offices at the main entrance door. Uh, there were now 29 staff, but only 403 students. Um, that caused a bit of an issue because now we had all of this space and our student numbers weren't quite up. So in 86, 87, the Chestermere Conrich ECS Kindergarten moved in to the two rooms on the south side of the old building and it stayed there until yeah. the end of June 1991. So it's John, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's not a reunion, it's a... Yeah, yeah. all right. Uh, the Chestermere Conridge Kindergarten started with one portable on the north side of the building uh, north of the old gym. And as the construction started, 
they move to the south side of the uh, old building, uh, south of Mr. Wiswell's old teacherage. And then, as I said, in 18, uh, 1986-87, they were able to move into the building itself to get some more utilization. The fourth decade saw a real radical change. In 1989, Rocky View School Division introduced the middle school concept. And 1990, 91, the grade six students now attended Chestermere High School, and this required an enormous shift and expenditure. A shift in co-curricular programs, because now we had an elementary uh, element. Uh, we needed to develop el elementary courses. We needed the curriculum accordingly, teachers, resources, uh, manipulatives, books. Uh, also changed the administration. The school now had a principal and an assistant principal that worked out of the new building, the new office, and two vice principals, one for grade six and seven, one for grade eight and nine, that uh, worked out of the uh, south office and uh, looked after those areas. Uh, there was a, a need for physical construction the two ECS rooms were turned into three classrooms that became the grade six classrooms. Uh, you had to have wa washroom uh, accommodations as well because now you were in elementary school as well. Uh, the admin was using the south office and you had to bring in smaller desks, chairs, and et cetera to accommodate this. The extracurricular program uh, shifted as well because now not only did we have a junior and a senior high uh, extracurricular group, but we now had an elementary group as well. Uh, two years later, the middle school became more autonomous and had its own assistant principal, now for grades six, seven, and eight, the middle school aspect. And the following year, Chestermere Middle School was recognized as a separate and new school within the building. The first principal and 38 staff and 436 students shared the resources, um, the shop and so on, uh, gyms and so forth, until Chestmere Lake Middle School opened in 2000 here in the city of Chestmere. Some of the high school activities during the 90s, during this period, in total, 1991 to 92, there were 44 staff and 641 students from grade 6 to 12. And we had put on portables on the northeast corner, so we added four more classrooms. Uh, two years later, we were up to 722 students. And again, more portables were added. Uh, as the middle school became its own entity in the building, Chestermere High School per se now became grades 9 to 12, and that matched the rest of the high schools in the division. 1995-96, the fifth expansion sees the rest of the new building open, and that is the north side. It had four science rooms, so we had a science wing, two classrooms, and the North Social Area. Two thousand, two thousand and one, forty-seven staff, six hundred and twenty-two students. More renovations now as the high school moves back into the South Building, uh, into the middle school area, and things had to be renovated again. And through the decade, enrollment increased as Chestmere and Langdon grew. 2009-2010 was the last year with grade nines in our building over here. So 
So that put us out of sync. The grade nines went back into the feeder school system, basically because there was no more space for the number of students to accommodate them in the fine arts, art shop, home ec, and so on uh, to reach the de demand. And since then, the uh, school has been grade 10, 11, and 12. Talked about the building development. I just want to talk a little bit now about the field development because I don't think you'll find very many school sites with that much acreage anymore. Uh, in the centennial year, when I was in grade eight, Eileen, I don't know what year grade you were in. You weren't there yet. Oh, that makes me feel real old. But uh, that was the year we planted trees around the perimeter of the school site. It was kind of heartbreaking when they did the uh, new construction and that to take out a lot of the trees that we had built. Uh, trees donated by Ken and Terry Ann Soderberg were put in between the old building and the new building to separate the middle school play, playground from the high school uh, area. Uh, we had a track built. Dr. Norm Miner, very influential in getting a track built to uh, make things a little bit more uh, in line with some of the other schools in the division. Uh, the football field has seen probably the greatest development. Football field now known as up. Uh, when the expansion, when the, 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 the expansion to the new building was in place, they had uh, level the football field, owned it, grassed it, and so on. And actually, we have an irrigation football field. Uh, the only situation is that the irrigation system is put into the holding pond across the road in High Point Estates. And Alberta Environment uh, let us use that. Drain it once in a year, but that's what it is. Uh, as the football program Still the spotter's box and the scoreboard. The next project was the stands that were put in. A lot of times we have that one. Crowd, but it really was. The next one uh, was putting in the lights, and that uh, Friday night was the uh, local heat. You're not muted. Well, there we go. Okay, the, the local chiefs are Bantam, Kiwi, Adam. They now are able to use the field at night. So we do get a fair amount of use out of the lights. I started on a plan to uh, build a, a building so that we could have change rooms and washroom facilities and also to start working on getting artificial turf installed. Uh, downturn in the economy, we raised some funds, got some donations, which were great, had some uh, set up by the school and the school division but uh, just couldn't uh, acquire enough and then COVID hit and that's just kind of been put on hold for the time being. Uh, some of the other development uh, was that uh, Chestermere Soccer uh, in conjunction with the school developed the fields south and have put up soccer nets and uh, boxes to hold equipment and so on. So in the summer, spring, fall, a lot of times you'll see a lot of use uh, with our local soccer program. I, we have always been uh, proud of the legacy of the many successes uh, that the school has uh, uh, 
accomplished over the 60 years because now we are in the 60th anniversary of the school. And uh, we have tried to display these uh, as role models for the students year to year to year and to provide memories when we have uh, alumni return uh, to the school. Uh, some of the ways that we have done this, um, the grad class photo uh, surrounds the hallways right from the class of 1961 down the hall around the corner back up and another hall we're starting to uh, run out of usable space. But uh, that's a good thing. We've gone from, you know, like 12 grads to 250 grads, roughly. Um, honor roll and academic achievements are posted throughout the school. Uh, plaques in certain areas um, around, uh, well, for example, uh, music awards and so forth. And uh, we have also have a number of wards and plaques that we recognize achievements in these other areas in fine arts, uh, band and drama uh, down uh, in that particular area where the band room and drama room are. Now the drama actually is in the old gym and uh, we did buy bleachers a few years ago. Uh, we get them out occasionally, but what we've found is the weight of the bleachers on the old 60-year-old floor anymore, but on the hardwood floor is a little tough, but they uh, do have a number of musicals and drama presentations uh, down in that area, so we have uh, spots there to recognize the achievements. Uh, we recognize the achievements uh, of the CTS. Now, CTS, um, Career and Technology Studies uh, at the shop. We have a culinary arts room that uh, recognizes uh, students for their success in chefdom, mm -hmm. culinary arts, uh, cosmetology. We have a cosmetology room and we recognize that. Um, and there's other things as well. We had uh, one yeah, lad here a couple years ago get the gold medal in provincial yeah. skills competition the gold just, medal in resume, write, resume writing. So, you know, we have lots and lots of things that we recognize, uh, citizenship, uh, principals awards, and um, uh, general citizenship, mile, uh, extra mile award, and so on and so forth. Uh, Jaden Summerfield Award uh, for one of our students that uh, passed away tragically here a few years ago. Um, one thing that uh, does make me sad, I've been to too many funerals. Anyways, moving on, I suppose probably the biggest things that we find are the uh, sports uh, awards, uh, the championship teams and athletes. Uh, displayed in pictures, team pictures uh, around the halls, the banners in the gymnasium that's now called the Wilson Gym. Uh, both Mr. Utley and Mr. Wilson have put in a ton of time and expertise in the area and had the field and gym named after them in their honor, which is uh, truly a really great thing. Um, uh, and one of our proudest displays is our Hall of Fame, which is found in the North Social area to recognize accomplishments of alumni in academics, uh, fine arts, uh, just regular achievement and in sports uh, encompasses a lot of people that have gone on to careers in music, uh, Academics, we have uh, one there to recognize a young man that's second in command of the Canada arm on the space shuttle. Um, just, as example, just as an example of uh, all the things we recognize, some of our hockey players, uh, athletes that have gone on to university, and these really, really do uh, provide uh, great role models for kids to achieve and achieve too. 
The sixth decade, 2014-2015, there were 60 staff, 754 students. Three years later, 79 staff, 871 students. And 2019 to 2020, 899 students, grades 10, 11, and 12 in the building. And then COVID put a, uh, a big dent in things. And uh, I'm happy to say I am back subbing now. And it has caused some issues, but kids are coming around and kids are kids. They will be successful. They will succeed. Right now in the fall of 2021, there are 940 students in the school. That puts it at 95% capacity. And that's the largest school in Rocky View, except for two of the Airdrie schools that still have their grade nines. So we've got a lot there. We know they're looking at a school in Langdon here in a few years. I'm sure there will be a school here in Chestermere in a few years. But the high school as it sits will continue to be in operation for a number of years to come. Uh, because it will take time to build new schools and the area will continue to grow. So there will be a need for that particular school. I come to the end of my pages. Well, thank you, Don. That was great. <clears throat> Hi, Brenda. <laughs> Oh, they don't have one for that. Uh, yes, if you could uh, uh, unmute yourself, you can ask some questions and um, of Dawn. And then uh, Eileen brought a, a bunch of memorabilia, which we're going to uh, scan to, and maybe you can uh, say a few things or... Okay. I, uh, I've just got one question for Don. Hi, Greg. Hi, Don. Hi. How do you stay so young? Oh. That guy next to you has got the gray hair. Do you look just like the last time I saw you in the corridors? Mm, that's because I have no hair. <laughs> nah, it couldn't be. Not, not no. possible. That, that's what the kids at school say. Is that your grad picture or your picture there on the wall? I said, yes, that's when I had hair. <laughs> Great to see you yeah. and to see the names of many, many familiar people across the top there on my computer. So that was fun. Yeah, it was. Good to see you. Have a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Oh, oh, yeah. My grandson's sleeping next door. He'll be waking up very soon and I'll be taken off when that happens. So uh, cool. Cool. Good to see you. Okay. Someone else should talk. Anybody else like to say hello? Oh. Yeah. Ethel, are you there? No, <laughs> Ethel's not here. She retired finally. Oh, no, I'm, she was... I'm here, Dawn. There she is. is. <laughs> I've listened to your history lesson. Oh. oh. When you said I wrote that for the history book, I go, ooh, I don't remember writing that. <laughs> oh, well, it was it. We cut right to the chase. Yeah, Hi, Ethel, you look great. <laughs> Thank you. Question here. You have almost a thousand students now. Yeah. How far does the service bus come to bring all those students in? What's the area? Uh, well, probably Delmead, Conrich. A little bit east of Balzac, yeah. Yeah. But they run a lot of buses out of Chestermere and out of Langdon. Yeah. The, the schools here, Langdon and Chestermere and so on, start a little after 8 in the morning. And then the high school starts at 9 so that they can double bus. So... Oh, yes, it is. It is. Yeah, it's like you mentioned, it used to be all the kids went to Conrich, the little kids got off. <laughs> High schoolers consolidated on the Keener buses and went over. To yeah, Conrich. got on Len Baldwin's and Matt Bates's buses, and away we went. <laughs> yeah. 
But what's hard to believe too is, uh, sorry, is that Chestermere was, uh, Chestermere was in many ways a smaller high school in the uh, Rocky View School Division, but when you mentioned it has now expanded close to a thousand <clears throat> students and it's one of the larger high schools because it was always uh, the uh, Burt Church and George Mack and, uh, and Airdrie and then Cochran High, they were always, mm -hmm. but so um, big change in population here, obviously, yeah. Well, with, with the students and staff in the high school every day, it has the population of a small town crammed into one building. So, you know, the, the link is still the wonderful thing where you just kind of elbow your way along. And... So, so, John, I have a question because it brought back all the memories of the kindergarten being there, mm -hmm. the privately run kindergarten yeah. at that time, which yeah. the community ran. Yeah. And I think that portable eventually came over here yeah. Did it not? I think so, and yeah. It was the little golf course shack. Um, it, it, it came onto the grounds here because they they just donated it. I think it was from ATCO that we got it originally. I can't remember. I, I'm sure it came over here to the rec center and was here for a long time in various uh, forms uses. of abuses. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. I, I sort of remember that because the kindergarten had a big room and then had a playroom at the end. Yeah. And so it made it extra large for someone to use for yeah. that. So anyway, it was a good days. <laughs> so did Ethel, did you go to, uh, were you attended uh, Chester as a student? Yes, she did. Yeah. Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> he graduated a couple years ahead of me. <laughs> Go on. <That's> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wish people would show their faces. I hate Zoom with seeing names. I'd love to see your yeah. faces. Well, should, depends um, what system they're using, whether they can actually, you know, project. I saw Indus Apal was on nope, there. There's with a others. few that showed me them. There's I saw Indus was everybody. using his iPhone, so I don't know whether. Yeah, if you could uh, put on your uh, the video and then you could, uh, we'll see uh, the faces. Hey, Marianne. <laughs> And Gail. It's all yeah. the people I worked with. Well, I want to see if anybody else is come, 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 come. Yeah, I see Leanne is watching and Elisa and Jim Ritchie was there. Hi, Ethel. Hi, Mr. Jim's been Harvey. having trouble finding. He said he couldn't hear and see you, so I don't know if he got that fixed or not. Oh. Uh, Elisa, you look like you're out shopping. <laughs> <laughs> you're crafting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lisa Wallace, oh, there we go. Nice. Elisa's been one of our big guiding lights with our field developments and team stuff. Mm -hmm. we really appreciate that. Oh, Josh Riker Fox is on there. He go. says, Hi, Mrs. Barnett. <laughs> there was one of our great athletes, is Josh. Yeah, Josh is in our Hall of Fame. Hi, Don. Don, my name my name is Kay Clark. Hi. And I I actually uh, did some sub subbing in Chestermere back in the 1970s when the principal was Mr. Piwar. Yeah. Do you remember him? Yes, I do. That was the 60s. That was back in the 60s. He, he was my first basketball coach. He took 31 of us wherever he went to play basketball. I think he built the, the canoes at Catholic. Did he go to Catholic school too? I don't know. Because yeah. he used to live uh, just down the road where you turn. Instead of going up to Wises and Matlow's, he lived down that road. Let's just show, uh, we'll just scan okay. some of the, uh, the memorabilia that we have here. Just to, There are a lot of old um, school books, but also some uh, some sports, some t-shirts, we'll just make sure we've got them, uh, so these are some school books from 1963, you'll see that there's a uh, semp semper, which is uh, Latin, second to none,
there's a, there's a ring. Any significance to the? Uh, I was the ring when I was in high school, I guess probably. Yeah. It's got the crest on it, but it was the crest at the time. Yeah, it's got a sailboat crest. Yeah. yeah. I had to grab the ring, but I lost it. For me. There's the old echo, might remember this too. Oh, I guess it's, a, but um, this is one of the uh, sweaters that, uh, that I got uh, for coaching and I'm sure people recognize, Don recognized it right away. Some old t-shirts. From a reunion. We don't know who wore that. Yeah. It looks like one of our gym t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> it was donated by Kim Soderberg. <laughs> uh, God forbid, don't show the gym shorts. <laughs> yeah. So these are again some of the old uh, yearbooks, 64, 65. And uh, Don, Don mentioned that too. Come on, hold. They, we were the, uh, it was the Red Devils. And then that uh, Don was mentioning that it was, we had the Cowboys, the Lakers were sort of the basketball, but the Cowboys were, I think, the um, football. And then uh, he said, they've all, everybody's the Lakers now, right? Yeah. yeah. And so these are all the old yearbooks from uh, 71. So anyway, it's kind of neat. Yep. Don, you missed it. Candace was just uh, modeling her Chestermere coat. Oh. So Candace had brought, put her coat on. So for some of us who uh, taught at Chestermere, <laughs> there's a picture of Don. Um, and Hugh Haxton, they're both teachers there. <laughs> kind of a good, you'll notice Don didn't have any hair then either. So, I, but that would probably be uh, middle nineties or something, right? I guess, yeah. Was it a staff party? They looked like very, very happy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think well, Don was a big drinker always. <laughs> yeah, I'll show this one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Great. Anybody else have any questions for Dawn or anything? Uh, anything else? Well, hearing none, I uh, really appreciate uh, everybody coming. That was uh, very nice. Uh, and particularly to have some of the old staff and people from the community. I see Wendy Mickelson was, uh, was there too, so um, which is great. She just uh, lives in this area too. Just down the road, and she, the reason I know her is because uh, I did um, adult ed, and, and Wendy was always the uh, coordinator for that, too. So that was great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to find what I need. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have, oh, here we are. No. Oh, here it is. Sorry. Got it. Okay. In the time of COVID, where, where do you stick stuff? Well, it was in the mask. Anyways, I wanted to make a, a we have a, a, a pin from the Historical Foundation. So we wanted to uh, thank Don and uh, uh, give him a, a little pin as a, a thank you for making this presentation. It was, it was great, really. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Don. Hey, Bill, is my favorite pharmacist hanging out with you there at the moment? Yeah, I, uh, yes, she is. Hi, Jen. Hi there. There she is. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for coming. This was wonderful. 27 people, I think, at one point. So that's a record for us. And thanks, Greg, for all the advertising you did. <laughs> no, that was really good. Thanks. Really appreciate it. More than that. welcome. More than welcome. Yeah, that was great. Facebook may cause problems, but it also lets us keep in touch. Yes, it does. And this is going to be, the recording will be on the website. Cool. For people to view if people weren't able to come. So we'll, that'll be up there. Good. Well, thank you very much. And uh, we'll say goodbye. Thank you.
Bye. Bye bye.